In this tutorial, you will explore what the Literacy Support Toolbar is, where to find the Literacy Support Toolbar, and how to use the Literacy Support Toolbar. Let's get started. Have you ever come across words and lessons that you weren't sure how to pronounce or what they even mean? Or maybe you like to have those words translated into a different language for you. If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you'll be happy to hear that you have access to an interactive toolbar found within your course to help you with reading and vocabulary. Let's take a look at where you'll find the toolbar and the different features you can use. You will be able to find the toolbar on the pages in your Getting Started for Students folder and your unit lessons and activity pages. Let's open a lesson to find the toolbar. You'll notice in the upper left hand corner of the page is an accessibility icon. This icon will float as you scroll down the page. You can open the toolbar by clicking on the icon and closing the toolbar by clicking on the X on the left hand side. This toolbar has been designed to stay out of your way until you want it and will stay closed until you open it. You can see that the toolbar becomes what we call a sticky toolbar. This means it's gonna stick to the top of your page while you continue to scroll down. This keeps the toolbar out of your way while you're learning, but still makes it easy to get access to the different buttons when you want them. Now that you know where the toolbar icon is located and how to access it, let's talk about what each of these icon buttons do. Let's start with finding the buttons that will allow you to have the text read aloud to you. There are two ways to do this using the hand icon and the play button. Let's start right at the front with a hand icon. The hand allows you to place your cursor where you would like to start having the text read aloud to you. In order for the text to be read aloud, you have to first activate the hand. It will turn pink when it's activated. You then place your cursor where you want the text to start being read aloud to you. The text will also be highlighted and the word being spoken will be bolded. To pause the read aloud, click on the pause button. If you want to stop the text from being read any further, click on the stop button. If you're done with the text being read aloud, then you click on the hand button again to release it or deactivate this feature. You know it's deactivated when it's no longer pink. The other read aloud option is the play button. When you click on the play button without selecting any text, it will automatically start reading from the top of the page. But if you just want to hear how a single word is pronounced or a specific section of your lesson read, then just highlight the text you want to have read to you and click the play button. The read aloud will automatically stop based on what you highlighted. To release this play button from having any other text read aloud, you'll need to hit the stop icon. And don't worry if you're in a lesson and you forget which button does what. Whenever you hover your mouse over any of the buttons, a tooltip pops up that describes what each button does to help you remember. So far, you've seen how the hand icon and play, pause, and stop icons work. Let's take a look at the globe icon next. The globe button is how you translate any text into a different language. Would you like to hear a word or a section read aloud in Spanish or maybe some other language? It's easy to do. Simply highlight the word or section you want translated, then click on the globe button. The translation box will appear where you can play the highlighted text in the language you've selected. When you're done, just close the pop-up window. I'll show you how you can change your settings to select a different language shortly. For now, let's move on to the next button, the dictionary. As you're going through your lessons, there may be times that you come across words that you don't understand. Highlight the word you need help with, then click on the dictionary button. The dictionary tool will not only help you with understanding the word, but also read the word and definition to you so you know you're pronouncing it correctly. When you're done, just close out of the dictionary pop-up. The button next to the dictionary icon is the picture dictionary. Select the word and click on the image button to open the picture dictionary. You'll see an image if there's one available for that word. When you're done, just close the pop-up window. Next on the toolbar is the fun highlighter and note-taking tool. 
As you're working through your lessons, you may find information you want to highlight and save for note-taking and studying. To do this, first click on the highlighter button to activate it. Then using your cursor, highlight the text you want to highlight. You'll see on the highlighter panel that opened that you have four different colors to choose from. Select the color you want your text to be highlighted in. If you accidentally highlighted the wrong text, just re-highlight it using your cursor, then select the eraser tool. You also have access to a strike through tool. This is a different method to interact with your text without using a highlighter. The last icon you see in the highlighter panel is a collection button. When you click on this button, it will gather anything you've highlighted or placed a strike through on into the collection box. It will keep all the colors intact you used for highlighting and any strike throughs will show up as plain text. You can then copy and paste your collection onto a Google Doc or Word Doc to use for your study guide. Make sure that any collections you have from a lesson get transferred into a Word or Google Doc before you move on to the next lesson. Otherwise, you will lose them when you move on to that next lesson. If you have a hard time reading text on a screen, you can use a screen masking tool to help you stay focused on a small amount of text at a time. Your screen masking tool is indicated by the binoculars. As soon as you click on the binoculars, your screen masking tool will appear. Use the screen mask to focus on the text you are reading. It will move with you as you scroll down and read through the lesson. When you're done, click on the binoculars again to deactivate it. Finally, the last button to explore is your toolbar settings. This is where you can personalize the tools to better suit your personal needs. You have three toolbar settings you can adjust. The speech for the read aloud feature, the translations, and your screen masking tools. On the speech settings, you can adjust the voice speed or how fast the text is read to you. You can adjust the color for the highlighted text as it's read to you, and you can adjust whether or not you want the read aloud feature to work when you click on the text in the lesson, like you saw earlier in the video, or if you would rather automatically start reading to you when you hover your mouse over the text. By default, you will have to click on the text to have it read to you. On the translation settings, you can choose the language you want the text translated to when you use the translation tool. And lastly, on the screen tool settings, you can choose from one of three screen mask types. By default, it's set to the letterbox setting, which is the type of screen mask you saw in this video. This concludes the tutorial on the literacy support toolbar found within your eDynamic Learning lessons. In this video, you explored what the literacy support toolbar is, where to find the literacy support toolbar, and how to use the literacy support toolbar.